Hello, hello, Danger Needles. How are you? It's been a while since we did this. Bright didn't know that Czech was a language. Shut up. <laughs> Maybe Anyways. she didn't know Czechoslovakia was a country. Oh my, I knew it was a goddamn country. I just didn't know it was a Czech was a language. God damn it. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably like, literally oh. like I like genuinely like genuine question Bry. so you go to ask like first you ask the question uh or like first you mention wait this isn't Latin this is Czech okay so you clearly in, in some capacity saw that the language of Czech was mentioned <laughs> And then after that, you ask, wait, is Czech a language? Yeah, yeah, we, we know. I, I know, Bookworm. <laughs> I know Czechoslovakia isn't, doesn't exist. It's Czech Republic. <laughs> Czech Republic. Shut up. <laughs> Anyways, like I was about to say, we should probably explain the tears. Because we haven't done this in a while. We have reassign, yeah. which means it should no longer be a keter. I forgot what I am guessing. What the fuck is like? Why the fuck is this a keter? I I think what the fuck is just where we put generally confusing things. Yeah, I forgot what spoot tier is. Well, just okay. You two talked at the same time. What was said? Oh, what I I forgot what spoot tier was. Tears for uh good bean SCPs. Yeah, anyway, we got only one only fix person one person at a time. Or it anomaly goes after a certain group and certain group. Cities so forth the con country and continent. World changing it would change the world but not destroy it. SK destroy the world, ZK destroy reality. There we go. Perfect explanation. Motherfucker forgot what food tier is. Shut up. <laughs> Anyways. The, the first SCP is what I'll be reading. It's SCP-2233. Also known as Sociophy. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Me and Hedge don't know what it's actually as I said. Because <laughs> I asked them they don't know either. Well, I I said that I'm pretty sure that's how it would be pronounced. Yeah. So see off. So so so. so it's, fuck. It is such a hard Sociosophy. word. Sociosophy. Maybe something like sociosophy. Yeah. Anyways. <clears throat> SCP-2233 is an academic discipline. Oh wait, before I continue, uh, I did put up the picture of the SCP in the chat, the voice chat. I forgot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Called Sociosophy. Manifesting through SP 2233 1 instances and 2 events. SP 2233 1 is a book labeled Polylog Over the Horizon of Postmodern Relativism. Published by the, the Club Friends of so Sociosophy in Prague, Czech Republic in 2014. The others are listed as STBB, email, fantastic, basic, WTAN, <laughs> Herbert Muncy, DMBS, at DMBS, Martin Perklopa, and Collective. I butchered the entire sentence there. <laughs> It is unclear if all the authors are real persons, as only a few had been seen during the Johidea events. Unconfirmed authors include Redacted. The book contains theories as pseudo-academic subjects such as polylog as an improvement of conversing problemology as a discipline concerning various life issues or neon platonism as a religiously philosophical wait, wait, practice. What's that word? Neon ovo 
Platonism. How do you spell that? I want to look that up. It, it's neon. O V O P L A T O N ism. Wait, at, what's after the P L A? P L A T O N ism. Right, you're describing Platonism. Neoplatonism? Yes. It's Neoplat. Oh my God! It's Neon right. Ovo. There's Ovo in there after Neon. Neoplatonism was a philosophical movement inaugurated by Plotinus. Oh, that's old. Which reinterpreted the ideas of ancient Greek philosopher Plato. Oh, Plato, Platonism. That's why it's called that. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's named after Plato. Yeah. Pla so it's Neoplatonism. Okay. But there's like also a Novo in there somewhere. Yeah. So what would Neo Novo mean? Who knows? I guess we'll find out if we keep reading. Anyways, probably. As a religiously philosophical practice, the practice of the discipline seem, seems nonsensical unless affected by the presence of associated persons of interest. Uh, the anomalous properties of SCP 2233 1 manifest when placed in proximity to other paper media. About after about three to five hours, the media start to mention sociosophy in various forms. For example, newspaper headlines mentioning recent sociosophy breakthroughs. The existing content of the media is also modified, for example, in the work of Redacted, a bibliography entry, Falcult, Michael, The Hi History of Sexuality, Volume 2, The Use of Pleasure, Vintage Books, New York, 1990 was changed to Moonsey Herbert, Sexuality and Sociosophy. Volume 1, Practice uh, Epistemophilia, Excrementum Bovinium, Little Hill, 2002. What? I'm starting to really think I should have been the one to read this. I told you there is like a bunch of shit you didn't want me to read. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, initially notebook was found, but after a redacted hour exposition of the history of sexuality, volume 2, to SCP-2233-1, the contents of Volkholt's book have been completely altered to a new anomalous publication described above. Wait, hold on. Novo means new, so Neo-Novo Platonism is new, new Platonism. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> That, that is not lost on me. <laughs> Neo, no vote. New, new. New, new. Yes. Anyways, affected okay. media exhibit the same anomalous properties as SV2231. 3 1 instances. Alright. Here, I'm going to read. I'm going to read uh, some of these because there's a bunch of them. But anyways, author slash title, Ren Fru Cullen, Free History, The Making of Humankind. Des description, author surveys the in contextual world of prehistorical man before written records were made. Modified author and title, Umbrell Peter, History on the, on the Couch. <laughs> description of the modified book, the author describes prehistorical inventions in a jovial style calling the man who was first found fire and the man who invented a wheel as the first proto socio -fis. Oh no. Oh what, no. What? what? <laughs> Author such title. Hitler Adolf. Mein Kampf. Oh dear. Wait, <laughs> Description. Description. An autobiographical book describing the world through the views of national socialistic ideology. <laughs> Modified author and title. Lise Frederich with Hammer Towards Philosophers. 
The description of the modified book. A 19th century German philosopher des describes the uselessness of philosophy in a secular society. So wait, so they let the the anomaly change a copy of Mein Kampf yes. to one of the instances of the anomaly? Yes. Okay, there for a second I thought it was saying that the anomaly included Mein Kampf, and that would like immediately like yeah, bump I'm up its danger it's level. Not, I am glad, I'm glad my first guess was wrong. I'm... Yeah, anyways, last uh, instance I'll read is author such titled The Brothers Grimm, Rapunzel. Description, a children's book publicly known best for the moment where a princess trapped in a and a tower hangs her long hair from a window. A prince climbs up on it to get to her. Modified author slash title. Lasky Alexander. Tree Kids. Description of the modified book. The main story is similar to Rapunzel, but reads as a scientific demonstration of a discipline called intellectual bonification. The princess uses her time in the tower to practice said discipline, which is never described, only cited from secondary sources. The prince meets her on the level of the right substratum. That's magic. New SCP, a new 2231-1 instances have been discovered inside publishing houses and during SCP-2233-2 events. The publishers take SCP-2233-1 as a satirical book, ignoring its anomalous properties. SCP-2233-2 is a designation for lectures on various disciplines of sociosophy so so by people who read SCP-2233-1 or attend a-2 event in the past. These occur mainly in college environments such as universities, mensas, or fraternities. Dash one instances are often given out during these lectures. Hold on. I actually lost my place. Oh god. Uh oh. What's an auto lecture? Auto lecture. Mm. Mm. Well, I, I'm asking because of the modified version of Shakespeare. Uh, uh, yeah. Has an auto lecture in the the performance. Neat. Mm. Anyways, you know, pers persons of interest associated with SCP-2233 appear in average sixty percent of the lectures, consulting a Johadia event when a copy of 2233-1 is signed by the persons of interest, the efficiency of the book's anomalous properties have been shown to increase by redacted percent to redacted percent, including increased speed of infection and range of influence. Uncontained SV2233-2 events constitute a major containment breach in a fault and check amount to and IK class end of the world scenario information breakdown. No pattern of in the frequency and location of, of 2233 2 has been established. Yeah. Anyways, I will now read a report of event SCP 2223 2 1 event. On Redacted 2014, the first Johidea event took place in Redacted Redacted Prague, a college cafe, as per O. Toma and J. Boschowski, members of Lambada 2 unit, present point of interest, Emil Franceschi and Martin Priklopa announced the event as a Morning's supposition concerning the death of Basque, WTAN, Herbert Munsey, who fell from the window of his study on a rock garden riddled with house sleek per capita. During the event, several points of interest had brief lectures on disciplines of sociophy 
during which several reality bending phenomena were observed to take place. This S2233 2 event also celebrated a release of SCP 2233 1 to the public. Access denied. Mm. The event helped constitute the parts of Procedure Stinks Lethe Acarion and Agents Tuma and Pacheski were voluntary administered Class C gymnastics after action. Anyways, lastly, transcript of Lecture 01-8, uh, oh, Auto Lecture, as performed by Point of Interest Mar Martin Quilopa on Redacted, 2014. I can't believe you just mispronounced transcript. Shut up. I can. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> I like to say, hold on, hold on, I'd like to say hi to fellow fans of Sufi. My name is Martin Frigalopa. Gone are the old days where you had to listen to boring pedagogue for an hour and a half, sometimes even more. I'm going to show you how to perform an auto lecture through which you can make your own decisions on any social sophisticated subject you find interesting, with my example being on God. Oh. You need to cite the audio lecture in a form of liturgic song with the least amount of aspirations as possible. Stand in front of a mirror, have a fern, nice sheen mustache put on, and, this, and scent the whole room with a frankincense. Redacted. Attach those two creations on the mirror so you can see both of them in your peripheral vision. And the view of you is not obscured. Obscured. <laughs> obscured. Shut up. One of the things I said is literally put your mustache on. <laughs> Explore yourself thoroughly. Begin a recitation and observe your every reaction. This is the part where I'm probably going to be clipped a couple times. <laughs> oh, I God. Howard. Howard. How you are so immense. Maybe no speak of truth that had ever been spoken about you. God is a human mock-up. God is an historical need which needs to be cherished and thrown away. And to have looked the truth in the face. The world is nor good nor evil. The world is the way we make it. God does not exist. God is that then which nothing higher can be convinced. We must be grateful to God for all the gifts that are now part of the highest gift of life. God does not exist. God blesses through damnation. Wait, which one is he? Is God the human Mecca, or is he dead, or is he blessed? I don't know. I'm just reading it. <laughs> God is God, is a godless abstraction. It seems we are trapped. Maybe the whole world is affected by God's absence. The most God is a mind freed of matter. He is in every one of us. God is the warrantor of the method. In the beginning, there were two gods, or three, one good, one evil, one redacted. Human is God. God is God. God is man. God does not exist, said the evil God. God knows who's God. Does God know if God is not just an explosion of a mind? God exists, said the good God. God is energy. God is nature. God is reason. God is love. God is all, said redacted. God is nothing. God is no thing. God, God is good for nothing. God is an ontological field. God is a failed student of theology. God is a, is the best in us. It seems... Is God on drugs? I, I don't know. It, it seems there's a high probability of God existing. God makes me not see God. God is jealousy loving. You cannot find God. God in reason. God is the deepest layer of my spirit. God talks to me through my conscience. God has internalized morality. God is, was made when the imperfect consciousness was made. God is an unconscious part of mind. God was created upon Adam, biting into the apple. God's prophet was a snake. Could our consciousness have been created in any other way than by God? It is unexplainable. Wonder, God is a snake. God gives motion to life as order. God both outrages and frightens, said redacted. 
God does not exist, said the good God. God is just a dream. God talks through dreams. God is a real is is a dream. God is reality. Some people are frightened of sleeping as a dream and also redacted. Whether God is creation of a of a God or man, we are unable to control it. You need to believe there is no God and it will not and it will not be. God can be. Stigmata are as common as medieval times as the GDP right rise in our society. To think God is only good requires sufficient mental not saying that word. No matter God's nature, he does not deserve any of us to die for him. Maybe God cannot do anything at all, but what if God died for a man? Philosopher's God is the same as no God. If God is not, not so unreachable, why is he such a bitch? God is reality. God is all God, God is nothing. God is nothing. God is a dream. God is redacted, 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 dead, expunged. Oh God, how are you so immense? Maybe, maybe speak no, tr no speck of truth has have ever been spoken about you. And that was it. So let's actually take. Let's actually take a quick moment to clap. I think Bright actually self-censored a slur. Yeah, it's mental R word. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I was guessing that's what it would be. Good, good like, job. You, you didn't it's... just keep flowing and say the slur this time. Yeah, I, I saw mental and I, and I looked over and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Also, I think uh, Bookworm kind of summed up very well what that weird speech you read very well meant, and what new new what new new Platonism is is uh, he's everything and nothing. I could have just said that, but it went all weird and crazy, and he read it very well. But that was weird. How do you understand what the final message was? What the f I just read. So, let, let me just like try to figure this out. So, the auto lectures in being described are basically esoteric rituals done to give oneself a lecture on this bullshit pseudoscience field that gradually takes over other pieces of literature. So putting that aside, it basically already gave us our tier uh, by mentioning that it could be a uh, information breakdown end of the world scenario. So I would say that that would be world changing. Yeah. Yeah. The world ain't destroyed. The world ain't destroyed. Humans are still around, but they're whatever the fuck that was. They're they're new new plateau plateauism. Late so, Yeah. I feel like this is the most pretentious, world-changing SCP we've run into. <laughs> it probably is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had to look up Nova just because I was like, okay, why the fuck is this word here? It's added for a reason. New, new. New, no. new. Well, it's only one new, but you know. Oh, it looks like the next, next SCP... Um... Actually, guys, classification changed. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, it went to Euclid with moderate containment difficulty. What's its number? Oh, wait a minute. God damn it, I was looking at the wrong number. <laughs> eh. So do I read this one? <laughs> yeah, I was looking at 2237 instead of 2238. <laughs> Dingus. I was one number off. All right, Hatchet, yours is going to be broadcasting live from out of time. I'm sorry, what? And this is its classification changed from space to Peter. 
Oh, yeah, it did. Okay. I sent I a picture like... of the anomaly as well. Give me a sec, I just realized I forgot to do something. Did I send it to you? No, I don't. I don't think I did. I just put it in my voice chat. Oh, you did? Okay. So, hatchet acid. That's all I need to know. Booker says, ONG, I think Hatchet is perfect to read this SCP. We are now waiting on the hatchet. Yeah, I forgot that the new friend that I mentioned asked me to let them know when we went live. Ah, okay. Life. I put, uh, I new window. Okay, so where's the link? Uh, Jerry put in voice chat. The voice chat. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That picture. Mm hmm. Are you okay? I think that's the talks that had Stalin. Uh, Churchill and Roosevelt come together, but Stalin's replaced with Trotsky. Who's that? Uh, the okay, this is a complicated little bit of history. Basically, uh, when the Russian Revolution uh went through and the Bolsheviks took power, the uh, Stalin was at the primary, like, the primary leader. No, not Stalin. I mean, Lenin. Lenin. Underneath Lenin was Leon Trotsky and Joseph Stalin. Mm -hmm. Lenin preferred, like, specifically wanted Trotsky to take over upon his death. But Stalin pulled some political shenanigans and managed to get Trotsky exiled, and then inevitably Trotsky got assassinated by a guy with an ice pick in Mexico. What but the fuck? Point being, yeah. I think yeah. this, I think this is an alternate. You, I think this is an alternate timeline based upon that one picture, where Trotsky actually takes power in the USSR. I mean, that is, I, I mean, that, that's very much past when known as the universe. Just read the SCP, says book. That's fair. Okay. So do you just, like... I just go, go from straight... description down, yeah. Yeah, okay. You, you don't do the special containment procedures? Yeah. Okay. It counts for this. Okay. Then I shall read. Description. SCP-2238 is the official designation of an anomalous phenomenon phenomenon primarily affecting television broadcast stations in the southern United States, manifesting itself as a series of historical documentaries within the affected area. This phenomena affects specific time slots within the affected region by hijacking local TV transmitters through a currently unknown method. <coughs> Burp. Okay. The main broadcast intrusion, uh, intrusion occurs during the airing of historical documentaries. The types of documentary that SCP-2238 affects are primarily made by European or American filmmakers, specifically those that focus on the First and Second World War. 
Although it has been reported that SCP-2238 will affect others that do not fall into this category. During an intrusion, SCP-2238 will play a similar documentary to the one being interrupted. This documentary, now known as SCP-2238-A, will have several deviations from the original, such as different events, different historians, and actors used in the documentary. I just noticed that we've got footnotes. Uh, footnotes, footnotes. A footnote there is, if said documentary includes dramatization to the actor. The amount of deviations from the original vary between each instances of SCP-2238-A. Currently, there are 22 instances of scp 2238A, and then footnote that says it is currently unknown how many unrecognized or unrecorded instances of SCP 2238A there are, some estimates going as far as into the thousands, while more conservative estimates go into the hundreds. Okay, the first reported SCP 2238 event was on the on Oh, 5 12 1992. I'm so bad at this. That's May. That's literally the month that we're in, and I forgot. Okay. Oh, hey, hey, Robin. That's the friend I mentioned. Welcome in. Okay. Uh, where the fuck was I? Right. Okay, so the first recorded SCP-2238 event was on... That startled me. Who was there? Oh, hey, Adarna. Me. Okay. Uh, fuck, there goes my plate. Okay. SCP-2238 event was on May the 12th, 1992, when a civilian reported a local broadcast service about the inaccuracies of the documentary... Napoleon Man of Power in Redacted Alabama. Uh, let's see. Footnote says uh, that's designated specifically SCP 2238A19. Don't know much about it. Happy to listen. Watch his voice. Is cute. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, Robin Drox in. The chat was saying something. Yeah, there's a person in the chat. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> the documentary discusses the effects of Napoleon Bonaparte's annexation of Russia and over a major and over a majority of the Eurasian continent. Addendum two two thirty eight one. Foundation scientists and analysts have compiled a full timeline of events from all 22 instances of SCP-2238-A. Little information is known about this world post-1946. So let me, okay, so, okay, this is gonna get fun. Uh, okay, so here's a timeline of events. 1812, invasion of Russia by Napoleon I. Ending in its annexation, the War of 1812 begins. 1813, Napoleon III is installed as the new Tsar of Russia. Closer diplomatic ties between the U.S. government and the new French Empire occur. The Peninsular War ends one year earlier in French victory. Uh, 1814, France becomes involved in a war against Great Britain, Great Britain. A three-year famine occurs in Russia due to an early winter, creating more resentment against the French-installed Russian government. In the same year, the formation of the party of Russian nationalists occur. I'll have to, I'll have to actually read what's going on in chat after. Uh, where was I? Okay. 1815. War of 1812 ends with a U.S.-French victory. 
Most of the former British Empire is split between the U.S. and France. U.S. annexes Canada, ca causing it to control most of the fur trade. No! What the heck? I don't... <laughs> Damn it. Don't take Canada. We need our hat. All and right. the maple syrup. Well, I guess it's literally ours now, but I, I prefer it being two different things so that we have a hat. <laughs> I mean, technically, the U.S. also has maple syrup, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the largest the... crater of maple syrup in the United States is Vermont. Okay. Huh. Neat. Yeah, but does the U.S. have uh? My brain just died. Whatever. Okay, I'm I'm done trying to make that joke. Moving on. <laughs> okay, 1816 to 1820, the U.S. government begins encouraging. I, I was gonna make it. I was gonna make a joke. Uh, do we have um horses or maple leaves? There. Hey, Canada is not the U.S.'s hat. The U.S. is our dumpster fire of pants. Valid. Okay. Uh, the U.S. government begins encouraging its citizens to settle Canada. Only in the first begins conquering most of mainland Europe, dismantling their governments in favor of pro-French ones. The French government start to kill Russian nationalists and those for an independent Russia. The French Empire collapses due to the death of Napoleon I via assassination by nationalists during his first visit to Russia. A revolution referred to as the Russian upheaval occurs. No Napoleon III is killed and replaced with a descendant of Tsar Alexander. Oh, and I'm... Forgot to say, that's 1821. Okay. 1822 to 1850. Most of the Northern and Western Europe... Most of Northern and Western Europe experiences a dark age due to significant infighting between various factions following the death of Napoleon I. Central and Eastern Europe are divided between pro- and anti-French forces, primarily ending in anti-French victory, further deteriorating the already fracturing French Empire. Southern, uh, Southern Europe was primarily affected by this as the lack of uh, major Austrian and French interference in the region allowed radicals and Italian nationalists to gain power. A new Russian government is created, this time with a system similar to a constitutional democracy. Along the same time, Great Britain experiences great social unrest with several riots and attempted revolution. <laughs> 1850 to 1865. A new government is finally established in France, this time under the control of a queen known as Abella I, the daughter of an anti-Napoleon general. She reestablishes centralized authority in the mainland of France, creating a dictatorial police state, killing dissenters and radicals. The American Civil War does not change from the original timeline. Uh, 1866 to 1911. Abella I reigns control over most of pre-1812 territorial borders, excluding the Duchy of Warsaw, but her state continues to suffer from radicalism and independence movements. The Russian government undergoes another revolution, this time by Russian communists under the control of Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky. Revolution ends in 1910. Wow with a communist victory. 1912. The House of Commons of Great Britain is attacked by radical communists via improved explosive... Oh, improvised explosives. 
Over 100 members of par Parliament are killed in the explosion, resulting in a temporary suspension of constitutional rights and annual elections. During this time, the new communist government, now calling itself the Soviet Union, annexes most of Eastern Europe states not under French influence. The creation of oh, 1913, the creation of the Allied powers, an alliance between the US, Great Britain, Austrian, and the French government. <clears throat> its creation was due to the recent territorial expansion from the Soviet government of most of Eastern Europe. 1914 to 1924. This time period known as the Great War was a war between the Soviet government and the Allied powers. It began after the assassination of Vladimir Lenin with Leon Trotsky de shit. declaring I just got possible, a new uh, bleh, possible French involvement in Lenin's assassination. By 1914, a small border skirmish between the client state of the Rhine Confederation and the Soviet Union lead to another war. The US, UK, and Austria, honoring their agreement with the French, declared war on the Soviets. Following heavy casualties on both sides, the Soviet, the, the Soviet Union capitulated in 1924 after a victory near what is now modern-day Warsaw. The Treaty of Berlin stated that the Soviet Union would give up most of its territorial gains after 1912, replaced with either French client states or independent countries. In addition, the Soviet Union is forced to pay reparations either in gold or oil. Thanks for, thanks for the follow. E. Thank you for following, Robin. Following is a bright. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. 1929. An event known as the Great Depression <laughs> began, causing an economic crash. That's good to see that that didn't change timelines. Due to this event, Albella II, the Queen of France, desperate for economic wealth, convenes for an update to the Treaty of Berlin with the Allied powers to the exclusion of the Soviet Union. Austria and Great Britain refused to update the treaty without the inclusion of the Soviet Union, while the U.S. remained officially neutral, still wary over another possible war. Despite repeated claims from the Soviet government that they had sent diplomats to Berlin to Discuss updating the treaty. They never arrived. The evidence suggested a possible French intervention. Abella II, frustrated with this diplomatic dysfunction, began mobilizing her forces along the Soviet borders, despite objections from her military advisors. 1930. Austria and the UK, wishing to avoid another great war, attempt to persuade the US to intervene. Believing that, with a possible forefront war, the French Empire would back down from their threats. The U.S., still wary of war and suffering from the Great Depression, refused and remained neutral in the conflict. 1930-1945 Abel II, citing a belief in the supremacy of the French Empire and the inherent necessity of curtailing further attempts at Soviet expansion, declares war against the Soviet Union. The Second World War between 1931 and 1937 is at a constant stalemate. There is no full invasion of either country till the U.S. enters the war against the French. In 1939, a full invasion of France begins with the help of the Soviet Union, Great Britain, and Austria. It ends in 1945 with the invasion of Paris destroying most of the city. 1946, year of the creation of the United Nations, with the Soviet Union, the U.S., Austria, and Great Britain as the major leaders in the nations. Little information is known about this world past 1946. Yes, yeah, so it's, the Great Depression wasn't that depressing next to the, <laughs> the Black Plague. So yeah, it's literally just an alternate universe where instead of Hitler, 
it's some French lady named Abella the Second. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting alternate timeline. Wait, so actually, does that mean that the French it, it would be the <laughs> the French party robot instead of the German party robot? Oh God, shut up! <laughs> oh my God, about that weird alternate There's... timeline. There's also no mention of like an actual genocidal. Well, I guess I should avoid that word for Twitch. Big G word aside, our uh, camps. Yeah, like there's no mention of that. Yeah, but the anti-Semitism and stuff weren't mentioned. So, I'm. There's also no mention of nuclear war weapons. So there might. Yeah. That might have. They might not have. So, they might have had a nuclear. Uh, new, a nuclear thing where they die, all died. Well, just remember, be, be, these are just a summary of the timeline. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like, I well, then again, let's just be frank. They're, we're talking about history documentaries airing in Alabama. They probably would leave out bigotry <laughs> as a point of discussion. <laughs> but yeah. um, at the very least, I think it's fair to say, based upon the information we have, it doesn't look like uh, the French Empire, like it, it basically seems as if like large scale fascism just didn't develop in this timeline at this point, which is uh very preferable actually. Oh, anyway, I looked further hmm. ahead. Someone they gets might have. Fucked. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I just I just saw the Global Occult Coalition mentioned. Yeah, this is gonna get bad. Okay, let me take a drink. Whenever I see the Global Occult Coalition, I think of the chair. <laughs> I'm French... sorry. <laughs> I know, but also French created World War II, but no camps, no crazy stuff. French are at least nicer about their evilness. Oh, so yeah, I was gonna, I forgot to mention that. There was no Japan involvement in World War II, so it's very Europe-centric. Thing looking at so either these documents yeah. documentaries are just like like i guess that's the thing we're looking we're looking at this alternate timeline from an extremely narrow lens to where mm. like they're very specifically talking about the events in a specific region rather than world events so it we could, know it, we we know fuck all what's going on okay. with japanese imperialism okay also one, one thing yeah i think if we like take a look at that, um, it could mm -hmm. possibly be for based. So it could be, be like a quote unquote documentary from a from like a eugenicist because there were there were eugenicists who like or something like that. Who like yeah, very mm -hmm. like. very like based in the quote unquote west yeah true me yeah. uh so germany just chill af in this all timeline germany is chill af because they're controlled by the french i think it would be implied that germany is like basically a part of the austrian part by the way everyone in that vc is cute sorry not sorry thank you robin uh but yeah, and I think I, it would you, be implied. I'm so there's a difference. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it would be implied that um, Germany was actually uh, a part of the Allies against the French in this timeline. You can be both bright. I mean, yeah, you can be both sexy and cute. Now. <laughs> anyway. Okay, moving on, there's still, like, a little bit of this document to read. Addendum 2238.2. On, oh, is that January 23rd, 2000, SCP-2238 affected the city of Redacted, Louisiana, broadcasting a documentary entitled How They Hid in the Darkness. Uh, uh, uh Let's see. 
that footnote says that that documentary is designated uh, 2238A23. Uh, which describes a X-class lift of the veil scenario of the foundation due to increasing tensions between the foundation and the global occult coalition, specifically on an event that occurred in 1221, uh, December 21st, 1991. It also focused on how the foundation adapts to a scenario. Due to an error in the bin uh, pattern recognition system, uh, there was no uh, BPRS failure on this specific date in our timeline, it's saying. The foundation accidentally attacked a GOC base, ending in the death of over 3,000 GOC personnel. This event escalated tensions between the foundation and the coalition, causing an event called the GOC Foundation War that lasted three years. The contents of the documentary includes footage of Foundation agents locating, capturing, and containing several anomalous objects and entities. It includes interviews with French, with Foundation personnel and sapient entities, including an interview with O5, with O512. The following is an incomplete list of incidents, objects, personnel, and members of G. GOIS that appear in the documentary. Uh, SCP 1892 containment, SCP 1928 containment. There's a lot of these I don't know. Uh, SCP. That was SCP 1938, recovery. not 28. Oh, did I say 28? Yeah, you said 28. Yeah, I meant 38, sorry. Uh, SCP 2453 containment, redacted interview. Dr. Mann interview, uh, D2134122 interview, so I guess they interviewed a D class, uh, 0512 interview, SCP-2273 interview, which is, which is that? I forget which SCP that is. All right, anyway. Uh, member of the GOI, 5869 interview, which is also known as the Gamers Against We. Okay. Uh, object referred to as SCP redacted. This item has yet to be discovered. Containment. Incident 083-D slash Kondraki. No information on this event exists in Foundation records. It's footage footage of 051267 and 12 during their first meeting circa 1912. SCP redacted documentary claimed the SCP redacted had been eliminated via redacted methods Methods of execution for SCP redacted are still pending approval from the O5 Council. Following this incident, the entire country of redacted was given Class A amnestics over the course of five days. The elimination of all records of SCP 2238 A 23 and the detainment of over redacted staff members involved in the film, uh, all released due to lack of evidence of involvement, all personnel involved with how they hid in the darkness deny any involvement with the documentary. The following is a series of transcripts from the documentary, how they hid in the darkness. Do we want to read through those excerpts or do we think we got enough? I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I'm kind of curious, okay. but anyways, for a quick example about game, uh, Gamers Against Weed, it's basically an organization that creates anomalies as practical jokes, and most of the time they end up being really, really bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I remember that. Oh, yeah, GOI means group of interest. Okay. Yeah, I was about to tell you that too. GOI means group of interest. 
Yeah. Let's see. Especially, uh, let's see. Especially Hatchet, since they want to strap me to a rocket engine. Oh yeah, that came up in a, in 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 the stream that I was sitting in on. Previously, I was watching a stream with them and VC, and uh, the idea of a rocket-propelled Robin came up. Okay. Lots of reading. Okay. Uh, so here's some transcripts from that documentary. It was early in the morning when I first started hearing the artillery shells. I didn't know they were artillery shells at the time, just knew that something loud was going off. Got up and tried looking through the window in the distance. This building that I had passed by on my way to work was being burned to the ground. I always thought it was a barracks or a laboratory, if only I knew. Some men drag me and my daughters out of the house. They say they're with the coalition, a force trying to keep humanity safe. They tell us to get onto a bus to the nearest civilian safe zone. They take us to one and they force all the men and women above the age of 15, but not over 50 to come with them. I never saw my daughters again. Oh God, what did the, what did the coalition do? Let's see. They, they have sacrificed children to kill anomalies before, so probably that. Yeah, so that was a survivor of Site 43 raid. Our job was to get the civilians out to the safe zones. Most didn't know what was going on, and the ones that did know, and the ones that did knew there was no point in trying to keep themselves safe. The case that always sticks out in my mind was this old man near the border of Paris. He refused to leave his house, lived in it since the Second World War before the communists and Brits invaded. He couldn't get, we couldn't get him to move. When the coalition attacked, the house was destroyed and, he, and we never found the body. Civilian Protectorates, Paris, France. Is that excerpt? Okay. The reason we used amnestics during the war was because of their tactical usage. Throwing some amnestics in a can into a room filled with enemy combatants and have them all forget who they are for 10 or 20 seconds while you mow them down with M16. Simplistic, really. Bro! <laughs> Foundation General Kennedy. Why the fuck did they not use that in a real timeline if that's possible? Instead of just going in and fighting them. Or, or better, better yet, better yet, incapacitate them and don't shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> like, we could just not commit war crimes. That's an option. It's the foundation. You would think they're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they're murderers, is what I think of them. The janitors, <laughs> all of them are fucking animals. I thought they were just boogeymen. Used to scare some normies and losers on the internet. No. Moscow. Moscow was my home. Moscow was the only safe place left in Eastern Europe. All others were destroyed in the battles. Mostly by nukes and other weapons. I didn't think they had the balls to drop the anim that animal onto us. Killing us with its giant scythe. Butchering us all like insects. Bodies littered the streets. Men, women, children. Of course, the coalition had no choice. What other choice did they even have? Gamers against weed members, survivor of Moscow bombing. Hey, before you continue, I clicked giant sight to see what it would lead to. It goes to 076, aka Abel. They dropped Abel on them? Yep. <laughs> okay. I I love I love reading about the foundation alternate timeline where they engage in absurd war crimes. Hedge, hey, this is the second time we've read this. Uh, read foundation doing this. First on Japan yeah. with the emojis. Now this. Oh no! Yeah. 
Uh, at least this one is slightly, like, very slightly less fucked, because at the very least, this is like an active war zone, rather than just killing most of Japan because of fucking emojis. But anyway... Uh... Okay, you, uh... Private of the Foundation Air Force... Uh, says, Europe turned into an absolute hellhole during the first few months. The once spotless meadows was now covered with hundreds of large holes where the bombs and shells dropped. The larger ones were where we dropped the nukes on their sites. You could feel the radiation from up in the air, made some men so sick they passed out and crashed their planes. E. Jesus Christ. So, the fucking Foundation Coalition War, like, escalated to the point of actual nuclear warfare. Jeez. You, you know, according to SP001, uh, the Orb or Cycle, a GOC agent has a switch that uh, has from the ship that's near Jupiter that will fire a laser onto Earth. Because that was used to kill the Brewing God. They have that. It's so far they have not used it. <laughs> well. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, safe zone Brazil resident. There was never enough food for us. The coalition forced us to work the farms surrounding the safe zone. They had quotas for what we needed to produce in season. Each group needed to produce 10 pounds of food from each of the nine crops they gave us in the span of nine months. If we didn't produce that much, we were executed to send nine... Oh, we were expected, not executed, okay. We were expected to send nine months on the front, spend nine months on the front lines in Europe or America. We heard the horror stories, the bombings, the killings, this one guy, a bunkmate of mine, was told that his group didn't produce enough food. Brings tissued paper up to his eyes. We found him in the bathroom. He swallowed his shaving knife. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Hatchet goes burr with words. <laughs> yeah, so we found the camps. This time it's the GOC who made the camps. Are we at all surprised? Uh, Knowing Christ. the GOC, we're not surprised. They just kill anything that's anomalous. I don't think well, they're I will, surprised. I will say, when, when it, they first came up in this, I, I thought of the chair. Yeah. Um, this is worse somehow. Uh. So I would like to retract my previous <laughs> statement about this timeline being better. <laughs> It's um, worse. It would be better if it just went on without the SCP and GOC being actual organizations in this world. I feel like in this timeline, the SCP Foundation became worse so they could take down the GOP, but it didn't work that way. Yeah. yeah basically, at this point, it seems as if it... It, this is starting to sound basically just like two near fascist, at the very least totalitarian powers duking it out with each other, which is not fun. Oh, God. GOC greater or less, or I, I guess greater or worse than the Nazis? Not sure. Mm -hmm. I, they're evil yeah, we in know the terms of, of it. killing. <laughs> we don't know the extent of it. Yeah. yeah, we don't have enough information. So let's read on! Okay, uh, book says especially next interview. Oh dear. Of course we need... Okay, this is... Okay. Uh. Oh, oh dear. I'm just gonna read, like, what this is about first. 0514 on the disbandment of the ethics committee. Yeah, this is getting bad. As if the ethics committee had much of any uh, 
the fucking power as it is. Yay, fun camps, but, please. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, at Hatchet, there were times where ethics community had more power than O5 Council and forced them not to do things. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. It yeah. feels like it feels like they're very wishy-washy yeah. and inconsistent. But, you know, the one check and balance <laughs> of, of the foundation is now gone, which is a lovely state of affairs. Okay. Yeah. Of course we need to remove them. They were getting in the way with all their rules and regulations. We needed those weapons. The coalition were making their way to Britain and into the Gulf, but no. They said it was too unethical. They were in the way of progress, and we had no other choice. We sent in a coalition spy, quote-unquote, to kill them. Hmm? Oh, yes, they knew too much. We couldn't allow an information breach of some sort. Jesus Christ. Okay, so... Uh... Dr. Man on the use of SCP-008 for biological warfare. What's... Wait, am I remember what 008 is? Uh, it, I believe it's probably the, the zombie disease. Uh, let's see. A description. Complex prion samples of which are stored... Oh yeah, geez, this is this is the zombie disease. They they fucking dropped the zombie virus on people. Now is it the? You know what? In this uni in that universe, SCP Foundation and DLP are just as bad as each other. So they yeah, that's, yeah, they're they're like oh god. The one thing I'm kind of wondering is it the advanced zero zero eight or regular? Because the advanced is. Uh, Instead of the host eventually dying, they duplicate and spread infection even more. And their bodies are even more durable. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Okay, we first used D-Class. They were monsters. No one would have missed them. Oh, boy. I mean, we're already used to D-Class being dehumanized, but Jesus. I mean, we all know that not all criminals are really criminals, but saying that is just... Yeah. But we started to lose more and more. And you gotta keep in mind, sometimes D-class aren't even criminals. That's true. But but we started to lose more and more, and so we looked for other sources. Coalition, POW, civilians, things like that. The project was more important than any one life. Hmm? Of course. Of course we did. We dropped the infection over their sites, spread it through Europe. We had no other choice. No, okay, no, you so... in fact, you in fact had lots of other choices other than spreading a zombie virus all over Europe. Hey, had you just mm -hmm. be glad they didn't drop 610. Uh, okay, that thing fix just... everything. Well, yeah. Watch, what... the, watch that be their next move. Oh. What were you about to say, Adarna, before that? I was gonna, I was gonna say, yeah, they might be getting worse than the, the German the German party. Yeah, I think I think I think this whole <laughs> timeline has just turned into uh two Uber Uber German parties duking it out. This Nuke is awful. It's it's nuclear weapons versus biological weapons. Well I think the I th I think both sides were probably dropping nukes by the sounds of it. Yeah. But anyway, um Okay, the final excerpt is from a coalition soldier, veteran of the raid on Site 19. We can't. But, but we did it. We rounded up the Greeks, greens, blues, reds, anything that looked anomalous and forced them outside. We told them to dig a giant pit. Most of them were no older than 40. After they were done, we threw all the objects in the site into the pit and told them to face the pit. I'm I'm just glad that it wasn't me who had to pull the trigger. I, I felt like you read Hitler A group and Hitler B group. Yeah, that's this was okay. Okay, so this was a very interesting <laughs> anomaly. Yeah. But now we've got this little thing where um 
This isn't a particularly dangerous anomaly. Yeah, it just spreads misinformation. <laughs> yeah, like it's 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 glimpsing into a much wor worse alternate timeline, but like the the anomaly itself is literally just like fucked documentaries that can't be stopped from airing in like southern states. But they I... don't really hurt anyone, but they were really fucked up. They now, are very fucked up. He, I guess here's the thing that it could be dangerous for is people who believe like in conspiracies that are actually true. That they believe all conspiracies are true and stuff like that. They would totally believe this shit. Ah, uh, so certain group. What yeah. The fuck? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Book mentions though it would give some folks insight into the foundation. Yeah, since like oh, yeah. the one that we just read led to like a fucking anesthetizing of a massive amount of people. Yeah, an entire country, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. So I mean at the very least given that precedent, uh it affects an entire country, but it doesn't destroy an entire country. I guess we can see certain groups for now because, like, it hasn't gotten to the level of danger and infecting an entire country to believe in it, but most likely a certain group of people. Yeah. I guess that's the thing. I remember this being based strictly upon, like, how much danger yeah. is involved when ultimately, like, I guess... I guess, like, this is how, this is why it's really hard to <laughs> fathom, because, like, a part of this is that mm -hmm. information that's this backwards can be dangerous. Like, just yeah, yeah. look at, you know, our history of fucking uh, mm -hmm. conspiracy yeah, theorists yeah. and, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. like, oh, the, the, the fucking... You know, p particular guy that's currently being held in contempt of court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's limited to the U.S. South still, the book. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, in terms of danger, like, how do you quantify the threat posed by something that I feel like the average person would just take as a mockumentary? Okay. But, but the thing is that the, pe the, the people who would be spread, the conspiracy theorists who would be spreading this would probably spread it around the country. Oh, yeah. Because true. of uh, social media. I mean, true. And then we got to deal with stochastic terrorism from that. Yeah. Well, uh, remember, the FTP from this universe is very good at dealing with information. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. And I I guess that's the thing is like the only reason why they had to do that anesthetizing was because it was about the foundation. Yeah. But simultaneously, considering the fact that you know the foundation, the GOC war is a thing, it makes it very likely that there will be more of these documentaries published that talk about it. So there's very likely to be more instances of having to. I still feel like this goes in what the fuck people. here because I'm kind of leaning toward that. Yeah. Yeah, fair. Like it's not causing bodily like harm. It's not causing deaths, but it's, it's like a danger. Causing emotional and mental distress. Yeah, like like it's it's mm -hmm. it's like a threat, but not in a bodily threat to most people. I think what would be worse if it started doing documentaries on like. You don't recognize the bodies in the water, stuff like that, oh, like yeah. cognito hazards. Like if it starts showing that, that would be a huge threat. Ooh. Oh yeah, I hadn't thought about that. That could be. Oh damn, yeah. <laughs> but that is ultimately speculation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Also, it, if it did do a doc documentary about like uh, what what was his name, the like. Um, the, the the demon god or whatever. Oh, the Scarlet King. King. Scarlet King, yeah. Oh yeah. If if they they did one on him, they could possibly uh expedite his 
entrance. Yeah, because con- uh, law of concept. His name is Power. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but I think this is speculation. So it could possibly yeah. it could possibly be an XK. It could possibly be. It could be so many things room. on this goddamn board. <laughs> hey, Chew. Hi, um, Chew. This is the yeah, hardest we've ever spent on a one fucking anomaly. <laughs> Let's see. Book mentioned that, yeah, also probably why it would be classified, be classified from safe to keter. It was just harmless fun when it was about World War One and Two, but once the Foundation comes into it... Yeah. Uh, okay, I'd say, like, given our current amount of information yeah. and, like, barring assumptions, I, I'd say what the fuck, dear. Yeah, like if it's yeah, so Susie, like, I think would... even with assumptions, what the fuck tier would it fit? Yeah. Well, no, if we added assumptions, it could be like, what if the documentary start talking about Peter class SVCs? Yeah. But either way, I I think I think I'm fine with that. That yeah. said, I I will mention that I still very much appreciate that fucking edit of like that's a very well put together edit of fucking Churchill Roosevelt and fucking Leon Trotsky at those talks yeah. instead of Stalin being there yeah all right the next scp is scp2244 or also known as partition e i just sent a picture of it well, what was given? Okay, I I've been I've been seeing too many fucking fascists on Twitter. I dead ass thought you just sent a picture of a black sun. Oh my god! For, for like a split second. <laughs> I need to get off Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm I'm off Twitter for like about oh for about like five days. Well, I'll be go looking, but I I got I got locked out. Uh, oh, you I got s- locked out. Mm-hmm. Well, I got locked. My my uh, ca- my account got locked. Hatchet, hatchet, hatchet. Okay. Hmm? I decided to take a quick look at the description. The first thing I saw was sunset. <laughs> So when you said black sun, I started thinking that again. Because it's all sunset. God damn it. I don't understand what you're saying. Okay, so after Hedgett talked about the image with the black sun, I looked at the description. The first things my eyes saw was the word sunset in the description of the anomaly. Yeah, I guess that's why I haven't seen a dinner doing much on there. They literally can't. Yeah, but apparently it seems this anomaly is in Miami, Florida. Got locked for calling a fascist. Oh, come on. (laughs) Uh, Gotta love one of the most gotta love one of the most prolific social media sites being owned by a fucking Nazi. Anyways, you ready for SCP-2244? Yeah, go go ahead. Let's let's take our minds off of real world awfulness and back onto fictional awfulness. Yeah. All right. SCP twenty two forty four dash one is a four story office building located on Redacted in Miami, Florida, belonging to the Sunset Community Foundation. A registered five o one c three nonprofit organization providing technological components and computer skills. Training to unprivileged individuals. Prior to Redacted 2014, this organization does not exist. Despite this, all records pertaining to the SCF indicate they have existed in Miami, Florida since 1971 and include legitimate registration and tax exempt application forms as well as grant records maintained by other businesses, organizations, and corporations. Instances of SCP-2244-2 
are employees of, of the Sunset Community Foundation. All have observed instances appear to be human females between the ages of 14 and 70. No instances of SCP-2244-2 can be accounted for prior to 2014, nor appear to have any roots in the community, nor any records of birth, residence, or home ownership. None of these employees have been observed residing in any location other than SB 2244-1 for a period of, of time exceeding three to four hours. Subjects have additionally proven to be immune to all forms of gymnastics possessed of abnormal strength and speed and if constant to otherwise restrained will become catatonic and unresponsive for a period of 30 to 180 seconds before abruptly disappearing. While not hostile, SV-2244-2 subjects have constantly refused all entry to SV-2244-1 and have refused to answer questions regarding their company. In either a formal or informal context, attempts by agents to trail or and or befriend subjects have been unsuccessful in yielding any information. Instead, foundation personnel on Site 6 9-2 are limited to outside observation of the building. All windows display unoccupied offices and are sealed shut, disallowing any further observation deeper into the building. All entryways into SCP-2244-1 are locked or otherwise guarded by instances of SCP-2244-2. As of October 30th, 2014, SCP-2244-2 4-2 subjects have become aware of the Foundation surveillance and inquiry attempts following Incident 008A8A. Subjects have allowed brief interviews of Foundation personnel to answer questions relating to the safety and security of their work, although little else has been dis discussed. Right, you're, you're fighting, you're cutting out quite a bit. God damn it, Discord! Yeah. Fucking, fucking hate Discord. Anyways, discovery on Redacted 2014. Location of Redacted, which had previously been unoccupied residence, was replaced with SCP-2244-1. Due to a lack of eyewitnesses or video surveillance in the area, the incidents cannot be pinpointed to an exact time. Physical evidence of SCP-2244-1 itself, as well as Sunset Community Foundation, appear to exist prior to 2014 in multiple locations, both inside and outside of the United States. Review of Foundation documentation regarding SCB redacted, which had previous, previously been data expunged due to its mimetic effects, revealed the two businesses investigated between 2005 and 2007 by the Foundation did not, in fact, contain documentation regarding to SCF. Where post-2014 records show donations made to the SCF preserved pre-2014 records show no such donations made. Incident 008A8A on Redacted 2015, Foundation surveillance cameras monitoring SCP-2244-1 abruptly lost power. Uh, lost power. At the same time, personnel on site reported that SCP-2244-1 had momentarily disappeared and reappeared as a larger building. Prior to this event, SCP-2244-1 was a two-story building occupying redacted square meters, after which it became a four-story building occupying redacted square meters. Within several, several hours, SCP-2244-2 subjects began to cover the building in tarps and brought construction equipment and vehicles on-site to mass the sudden change. Following this event, a group of SCP-2244-2 subjects approached on-site for sale and offered current assurances that SCP-2244-1 was in no way dangerous nor an exposure risk 
and that the des decision to change was out of their hands. They refused to elaborate further. Although one subject made the offhand remark, people up top say they want the shiny fast new upgrade, not caring that it will be too sudden. Then complain that the shiny fast new upgrade is too sudden all at once. Addendum. An attempt to inf infiltrate SP-2244-1 was made by an, an agent on Redacted 2015 wearing a concealed audio transmitting device in coronation <sighs> with three more agents on site and site administrator Redacted. The agent described encountering SP-2244-2 subjects standing motionless in each room, unaware of the agent's presence. The agent dis discovered several conscious subjects and managed to successfully transmit a sample of conversation between subjects prior to being discovered. The agent has yet to be recovered. The site administrator redacted refused to provide an explanation for this operation and subsequently submitted their resignation. They were replaced by Administrator Lee, starting Redacted 2015. Log 2015. Note, Signal experienced significant interference suggesting the presence of some manner of electronic countermeasure within SB 2244-1. Recorded subjects have not been identified and, and are identified as subject-1, dash dash 2, etc. Subject 1. Yeah. Subject 2, indistinct, was started. She couldn't do anything else. Unidentified laughter. Subject 1. That's entirely not my problem. Subject 3. You keep saying that, but someone will make it your problem. Subject 1. I only handle partition E. Indistinct. Can't, can't go home otherwise. So why is it any of my business? Subject 2. People could die. Subject 1. People always die. Ask them if they're, if they're tired. To try turning it off and on again. Subject 2. I'm just saying. Subject 4. On, off, on, off. Sub note, subject 4 continues repeating this for the duration of the recording. Subject 3. Indistinct. Subject 1. There are years lost because they couldn't be asked to do 5-year backups, like I said. You couldn't... You can't be giving them our people. What, what year do they have to start from? Like, 1984? Subject 4, I'm not subject 2, sorry. Indistinct. Subject 1, glad I'm not them. Indistinct, few decades. Subject 5, does partition C or D have people watching them all the time like we do? Subject 2, it's the same planet. Subject 5, that doesn't mean all the partitions are the same. Subject 2, are you sure? I thought it, I don't know. At this point, the agent is discovered and the transmission is severed. And that's it. I'm pretty confused about what this thing does. I think the main reason why it's a key is we have no idea if it's dangerous or not. Like, at all. Because how secret it is. Wait, so there are more of these buildings all over the place? Yeah, so it's like some anonymous, an anomalous mm -hmm. computer company that just shows up places and it's making Who's, something it's, it's making something that apparently can kill people yeah uh books said they're eating people <laughs> i don't think that's true and their employees if you restrain them will peace out yep will just vanish And can just instantly upgrade their building. This is a hard one to quantify again. Because we don't really know much at all. <laughs> Book says, wait, I think we live in a simulation. <laughs> <laughs> this is a video game world like Sims. <laughs> oh my god. Just instant upgrades to... their if business this buildings. Is a game, if this game were, is this, if 
If this world is a simulation, then there's where's the sim simlish? I think one of my favorite things I've seen people point out is um you know how like uh when we create fictional worlds, it's very commonly because like like in contrast to the mundane of our world, right? Like fantasy and stuff. Someone mentioned if that's the case, then how boring is the world that's simulating our world? Oh. Like, like to that world, this, this is escapism. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's... <laughs> but anyway. Um... I don't know, we know that it's gonna hurt some people. It's hard to contain, and it's really weird. The world that would simulate us is an even worse off capitalist hellscape. Yeah. The world that's simulating us is fucking Dune. Yeah. Their fantasy is, wait, let's go back. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm thinking either what the fuck tier or certain group. I mean, it's just bothering Florida for the moment. It's just bothering Florida, so maybe we should give it spood tier. No. <laughs> Florida lives matter. <laughs> Florida True. Lives matter. But also Florida. <laughs> and maybe somewhere else that we don't know of. Oh uh, yeah, speaking of Florida, apparently someone stole someone's uh domesticated alligator and released it into the wild. I think I heard about that. Yeah. Okay, so... I'm thinking, like... Where would y'all want to put it? I'm thinking either certain group or what the fuck. I I'm too confused to put it in a certain group kind of category. Like... I don't know what the it, danger is. Yeah, it's just... It's just... Fucking... The fucking weird part like computer company i guess i i guess we could put it in like a uh, country given the fact that it's a computer company which means it's uh being well we don't uh, know the danger but we do know there is a danger we don't know how large scale it would be if they decided to use the the danger thing yeah. we don't know what they're doing but I was going to make the statement, there are a computer company, so they are affecting some countries in the form of slave labor. Oh, God. But that's a more mundane threat to people. It's, it's not anomalous, it's just fucked. Uh, I, I'd put it in what the fuck here. Hey. Like we we don't have a way to quantify how much harm it could cause, other than it can kill people, which is like, okay, I can kill someone with a pencil. Does that make all pencils dangerous? Oh my god! I love how Hat just getting all the the ones that they're probably gonna laugh while reading. Wait, are you saying that after the last one they read before this one? And yeah. The, not the, because... Are you saying that after the, the first one Hatchet read was like this terrible alternate timeline bullshit? Yeah, because the next SP they got is SP2271, aka Factory Loans. Oh. <laughs> oh. I already posted a link. Yeah. How do you actually like tell the 
um, nicknames of these things. Oh, because before you actually click on the number, the nickname will be right next to the number. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because its nickname is not actually on the document. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, SCP-2271. Why am I reading it like that? Okay. SCP-2271 is a poorly understood phenomenon currently affecting small populations in the American Midwest. SCP-2271 manifests directly as plain white envelope as a plain white envelope containing a letter detailing collections on a student loan account. <laughs> While the envelope and letter are themselves not anomalous, the manner in which they are delivered are, and as such, they have been jointly classified as SCP-2271-1. 2271 takes effect on an individual in three distinct steps, each categorized by a regression of the sus subject's mental state, as well as aggression on the part of entities classified as SCP-2271-2 instances. The steps are as follows. Phase 1, Initial Exposure. Subject, subject receives a personalized version of SCP-2271-1, Typically, this occurs through regular postage routinely received by the subject, although this can take place through a variety of different avenues. SCP-2271-1 instances have been found slind, 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 yeah, that's that word, have been found slid under doorways, inside of locked rooms, within articles of clothing, and in one case, within the Excrement of a prisoner in solitary confinement. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Just get out a fucking a fucking envelope. Are you All okay? In... I I that that grossed me out briefly. <laughs> All instances of SCP-2271, it will find you. Uh, 2271 refer to a factory financial management group and provides phone numbers and addresses used to contact the company. To date, none of these numbers or addresses have shown any indication of being afflicted with the company. Affiliated, not afflicted affiliated with the company in question or any group whatsoever, but if used to mail a package or make a phone call, will result in some kind of communication with the company. Packages do not require a mail carrier. Applying an address label of some kind will result in the parcel disappearing shortly afterwards. The individual receiving the instance of SCP-2271-1 does not need to open the envelope or read the letter to be affected. As soon as they receive the 2271-1, they become an instance of 2271-A. Uh, payment of debt is phase two. In 100% of all recorded cases, the letter within SCP-2271-1 will demand payment of a monetary amount that absolutely cannot be repaid, even if the subject had access to the total amount of all of Earth's liquid assets. During the second phase, 2271-A subjects universally become extremely agitated and obsessed with the repayment of the amount owed. Subjects will begin to sell all their personal belongings and assets and attempt to mail the collected cash to an address listed on their letter, or call the company and make a credit transaction. Attempting to hinder 2271-A subjects from making these payments will often lead to violent outbursts by the subject. 
Subjects will aggressively maintain that they must meet an impossible repayment schedule or face consequences from the collection agency. During this phase, 2271-A instances will begin to claim that they can see unclear humanoid entities on the edge of their vision, which are fast moving and clouded in thick sno smoke. Just about said Snoke, been watching Star Wars. No other distinguishing characteristics have been reported. These entities have been classified as SCP-2271-2. So it makes them start selling everything they own. Phase three, liquidation of assets. During the final phase of, affl of affliction, 2271-A will begin to dramatically Ah, excuse me. So, uh, we'll begin to dramatically sell off the remainder of their perceived belongings in order to pay off their debt. During this and the previous phases, and during the previous phases, 2271-A instances will receive additional instances of 2271-1 or dash one as updates to the status of their debt repayment. In no reported cases has the amount ever the amount owed ever decreased. SCP 2271 A instances have been observed shipping the remainder of their material possessions, the possessions of those around them, their teeth, hair, excrement, blood, and other bodily fluids, pets, children, spouse, slash close relatives, and finally, with no other alternatives, the remainder of their own body. There's a footnote. Often, uh, a footnote on the children, spouse, close relatives uh, says, often these individuals have been brutalized and arranged in such a way that would result in more efficient packaging and shipping. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, the behavior will continue until the subject expires or is no longer capable of making payments, after which they will disappear after the second missed payment. SCP 2271 A subjects who are restrained from making payments mm. will claim that the instances of 2271 2 that had previously existed only on the edges of their vision will become more prominent and threatening and begin to repossess items themselves. These claims are corroborated by observation of the subject and the belongings in question, which will begin to disappear if the subject does not personally make payments. 2271-2 instances have not been photographed, but thermal surveillance has, has ascertained that there is always a significant drop in local temperature whenever 2271-A subjects claim that dash two instances are near, often as much as 25 degrees Celsius. That's a sharp drop. 2271-A subjects are universally in a state of constant fear regarding SCP-2271-2 instances and will show immense hesitation to avoid any stimuli that they relate, well, immense hesitation to avoid. Okay. Will show immense hesitation to avoid any stimuli that they relate to dash two, including the sound of metal on metal, fire, strong wind, and a smell of burning rubber and petrol. Addendum 2271-1, Discovery. The SCP... The SCP-2271 phenomena was first discovered in the town of Redacted, Nebraska, after local law enforcement ceased, res ceased responding to attempts at communication by all outside groups. Foundation agents were mobilized to the town where they discovered that, despite signs of particularly graphic violence and struggle, the entire population had disappeared. The first instance of SCP-2271-1 was discovered during this investigation, albeit unknowingly, by the late agent Sandra McCoy during the sweep of an abandoned home in the area. Two days later, another report surfaced of a family of fanatics 
in nearby redacted Nebraska who had sold all their possessions and then violently attacked their elderly neighbors. Foundation personnel arrived on the scene and managed to apprehend the sub subjects. It was during this initial investigation that SCP-2271-1 and Dash 2 were originally classified. However, during Foundation occupation of Redacted, several other members of the primary containment team became affected by 2271, as well as a large number, 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 number of townspeople. This situation soon became unmanageable, and all unaffected personnel were ordered to move back to a five-kilometer perimeter and wait for further instructions. The situation resolved after two weeks with all affected personnel had either disappeared, expired, or become too incapacitated to continue making payments. The remaining inhabitants of Redacted were anesthetized and held for observation, then transported to Spain with different identities. The town itself was demolished as was Redacted. Incident report, uh, 3rd of January, 2014. On 3rd of January, 2014, Overwatch Command received a distress call from Site-91, the previous holding facility of all individuals contained in relation to 2271. After the initial site, after the initial call, Site-91 staff did not respond for an additional eight hours during which NTF Alpha 1 Red Right Hand was mobilized due to the remote location of Site 91. If I remember correctly, isn't that the MTF unit that's directly under the control of the O5 Council? Yes, and our main mission is to basically protect O5 Council at all costs and only go after anomalies that are, cause extreme danger to the world. That's it. Okay. Yeah, anyways. All right. Was mobilized. Due to the remote location of Site-91, MTF-A1 was not able to reach Site-91 before it suddenly detonated its on-site nuclear device. In the wake of this event, it was discovered that Site-91 had set one additional or had sent one additional message, time-stamped only two minutes before the detonation, of the on-site nuclear device, the message, a single scanned image, was sent with no additional explanation. Investigation into this incident is still ongoing. And that is the rest of it. Oh, wait. Received. Uh, let's see. Uh, the image next to that is received at site uh, 01 on that date. So, uh, the message that they sent out was the financial, or the factory financial management thing with a whole bunch of markers scribbled over it, and the words, there's a place in hell for debtors and a whole ginger size. Uh. Uh. You always get the fun ones to read, don't you, Hatchet? Damn. Well, I, yeah, Damn. I, uh, yeah. What a fun one to read. Yeah, one where the red right hand had to be called. And they're serious. They they only get sent out for serious ones. I mean, yeah, it caused a massive containment breach. That, this and is like... the entire population disappeared, too. Yeah. So, I guess that's the thing. Can uh, dash one instances be spread and affect people over stuff like the internet? Oh god, I don't know. If it can be, then this is an easy XK. Well, maybe that's why they had to, to scribble it out when they sent it, sent it over. That might be possible, yeah. So, up to the containment, maybe, if left unchecked, can be bad. Oh yeah, let me let me actually look at the containment procedures. Um, special containment procedures. Woman seventy one is unable to be directly contained. Current indirect containment efforts focus on mitigating damage caused by the anomaly. 
to affected individuals and communities, Foundation Task Force MU14 Forgive and Forget is currently spearheading efforts to contain it. Although the effects of 2271 are believed to be irreversible, evidence has shown that removing affected individuals from large populations and isolating them decreases the rate at which the population as a whole is affected. Additional Foundation Mobile Task Forces have been utilized to quickly separate affected individuals from their families and move them to high security containment at site 91. I guess, oh, and that's crossed out because I think it was site 91 that got fucked up. Yeah, wait a minute, I just realized. Yeah. It, it says it said less population, less likely to spread an infection. So if this decided yeah, to be this... sent in New York of all places, yeah, if, if this gets sent into a high density population, we're like, this is. Oh, gods. This is. Any and all. Fem... Yeah. Uh, let's see. Any uh, any and all foundation personnel who have become affected by 2271 are to be considered KIA. Under no circumstances are affected foundation personnel to come in contact with any other unaffected foundation personnel after. Responses are to be or self termination resources are to be supplied to these personnel as requested. So, literally, the only way that they can handle it is catch it early. Yeah. This is actually terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just going to be a funny keter. No, it came to be terrifying. <laughs> Oh, so it spreads between affected individuals. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, it can... Uh, it will spread between affected individuals based upon, like, some of those uh, instances in Nebraska. Yeah. Just monitor the financial records of every person on Earth. Easy. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what would be funny, though? Because it, it eventually causes people to disappear, right? Yeah. What if it was sent in into the 610 site? The 610 instance was to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the thing. Does this, ano like, does this anomaly affect things other than humans? Right. Because like, I feel like at that point, 610 isn't really human anymore. Not fully. I mean, they uh, gained some sapiens because they developed a sort of religion. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that they're human. Yeah. Get that anthropocentrist thinking out of your brain, right? <laughs> yeah, just 16 fighting off a horde of smoky death collectors. <laughs> I fight to I see. Fight to see. Well, you gotta keep in mind, like, we can't see them. So it'd basically just be watching a bunch of, like, gross-ass 6-1 instances flailing at nothing. <laughs> that would be kind of funny, yeah. Yeah. Um. Ah, fuck. I doubt that this could get to the level of country. Yeah. Or continent. I guess that depends, because some countries are literally just one city. But, barring that, I would probably say city. Yeah, the second I saw a red right hand in the document, I was like, okay, this is getting bad. Yeah. <laughs> is every, I, everyone in agreement with city? I, I think that's probably the most appropriate. Yeah. Uh, that that is of course assuming that the anomalous effects can't be spread over the internet. If it could be spread over the internet, then that's an easy XK. Oh yeah. But it doesn't sound like it. It sounds like you have to come into contact with either a dash one instance or a uh, a person who's infected by it. Yeah. Yeah. By the time it gets to city level, it should be noticeable. Yeah. And, like, at that point, it's either, like, completely bar people from going into the city, or just drop a nuke on it. Either way. Oh, God. Uh, 
<sighs> that one was heavy. <laughs> anyway, the moral of the story is, um, fuck debt collectors. That's all. Wait, I just realized, how did you just get, I get, like, the more calmer keeters. How did you get, like, the really fucked up ones? <laughs> you just noticed that? Yeah. My god, it was a response to Hatchet's luck. Well, I mean, the old timeline wasn't particularly fucked. It's not affecting our world in a particularly fucked way. Oh my god. The fudge people who see the biography. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Probably gonna be the final anomaly of the night, depending on how, how long it is. Oh, uh, okay. SCB-2276. Too many grace. What? <laughs> that's his nickname. And that's Too the picture I got from it. Okay. <clears throat> Why did you just send an equal sign in your own chat randomly? I did not mean to hit, I, I think when I hit enter, because I use equal sign for my mute. When I hit enter, I think it put that in both the Twitch chat and Discord. Oh. <laughs> oh well. SCP-2276 is a class of artificial space satellites orbiting various bodies in pairs. Each pair is an exact duplicate of the original gravity recovery and climate experiment satellites, as they existed at 1804 on June 11, 2002. SCP-2276-1 was originally launched by NASA on March 17, 2002. Instances are functional and respond to commands transmitted to them. However, transmissions must be aimed directly when commanding instances that have not yet been reprogrammed per 2276-W to avoid accidentally commanding multiple instances at once. New instances of SB-2276 will spontaneously manifest in orbit around Earth or another body. The rate at which new instances appeared was initially around 1 per 8 months. The rate has increased over time since then, around one new instance per day in early 2016, and is predicted to continue rising. 991 instances have been discovered to date, 347 of which are not in orbit of Earth. Orbits are all circular, with varying al altitudes and isotropically distributed. The complete catalog of SV-2276 instances is available in Addendum A. SV-2276-3A and B were recovered from orbit on April 22nd, 2004. Physical inspection at Area 15 revealed no inconsistencies and no anomalous phenomena occurred during quarantine. SV-22... Okay. What? Real quick, were you meaning inconsistencies? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You you keep you keep. <laughs> and Shut consistencies. Up. Shut up. Anyways, <laughs> SB twenty two seventy six slash three is currently in storage at site seventy three. A third status satellite was launched into proximity of SCP twenty two seventy six slash one on January 4, 2006, to conduct visual inspections of the satellites. No discrepancies have been found between SP-2276-1 and the satellite plans to date. It's, no... it's, dis it's discrepancies, hmm? not discrepancies. There's, no, yes. there's not another S. Discrepancies. A number of collisions occurred between SCP-2276 instances and other artificial satellites in 2007 to 2009, prompting the addition of the Active Collision Avoidance Program to the containment measures. This has significantly reduced the incident rate. 
While the rate of incidents, incidents arising from collisions with SP2076 remains manageable at the present time, SP2076 will likely pose a significant problem for space activities in the future. It may lead to an Appalachian Cascade event which within the next decade if actions are not taken to avert, to avert it. Appalachian Cascade event? It's sometimes referred to as Kessler Syndrome. Although use of that term is discouraged. I don't know what a Kessler syndrome is. Um. But Graham? <laughs> I'll just go look it up. You say Kessler syndrome? Yeah, Kessler syndrome. <laughs> I'm just messing with Graham. <laughs> SUS is by the way. SUS Kessler's... is by the way. Um, probably. Uh, okay, yeah, this is what I was thinking of. Kessler syndrome is a nightmare space scenario in which the number of satellites and orbital debris is so high that collisions occur, each one generating more and more space debris, and in turn, ca cascading collisions. So think the atmosphere at the start of the WALL-E movie. Yeah. Hello, last time, right? I'm reading SPs and then we're ranking them. Anyways. At January 11th, 2007, SCP-2276-45. Collision occurs disabling SCP-2276-45 A, B, and Chinese weather satellite FY-1C, officially reported as anti-satellite missile test. February 21st, 2008, SCP-2276-38, collision occurs disabling SCP-2276-38, 38AB, and United States spy satellite USA-193, officially reported as anti-satellite missile test. February 10th, 2009, SCP-2276-63, collision occurs disabling SCP-2276-63-B, communication satellite, satellite Iridium-33, and retired communication satellite Cosmos-2251, officially reported as collision between Iridium-33 and Cosmos-2251. December 9th, 2013, SCP-2276-437 Collision occurs disabling SCP-2276-437 A and damaging CBERS three launch vehicle during at ascent SCP-2276-437 A re-enters two days following this event Uh, uh, March 26, 2016, SCP-2276-859, collision occurs disabling SCP-2276-859-A and Japanese, Japanese X-ray telescope Atomi media suppression ongoing. Addendum A Catalog of SCP-2276 Instances, a table of discovery date and initial orbital elements, of which 2276 instances, instance is available to for research use. See documentation 2276B for information on how to access up-to-date inference data. Oh god, what the fuck? I decided to download catalogs I thought it showed, like, you know other shit. Now I'm just seeing a, a black background of a bunch of letters and numbers. <laughs> oh no. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine now. I got out of it. <laughs> I couldn't understand it. <laughs> Didn't them be use of SCP-2276 in researching other anomalies. Due to its nature, there are a number of, of SCP-2276 instances Uniquely situated gathered data on other anomalies and SCP objects. With a few exceptions, use of SP-2276 data 
to facilitate this type of research is generally permitted with proper clearance. Research talk target SCP-2886, SCP-2276 instances involved 316. Description, SCP-2276 has been used to help measure the mass of SCP-2886 due to its presence of, of only one instance. SP-2276-316, the resolution has been too limited to provide a clear subsurface imagery, but research is ongoing. Research target SCP-1812, SCP-2276 instances involve 696 and 794. Description, knowledge of SCP-2276-696 and 794 is, is restricted to individuals with 3 slash 1812 clearance. No attempt is to be made to contact or locate 696 or 794. Research ta ta a target SCP-736. SCP-2276 uh, instance involved 295-366-485-661-774-919-975 and 975. Description SCP-2276 has been used to provide precise data on the alterations in the orbit of the ep epitus caused by SCP-736. This data has allowed facially enhanced precision in associ associated orbital projections. Missions are underway to attempt to remove all SV-2276 instances from the orbit of Neptus to avoid provoking SV-736 further. Research tar target SCP-2362. SCP-2276 instances involve 672, 711, 877, and 891. Description instances in orbit of SCP-2362. 2362 and SCP-2362-like objects are being used to study the nature of this anomaly and monitor, their, monitor them in case of activity. Note with that most instances of, of SCP-2276 in orbit of, of SCP-2362 were destroyed by debris following the event of SCP-2362-A. And that's it. Hmm. Let's see. Basically, I'm trying, like, I'm trying to look into how dangerous Kessler syndrome could be mm -hmm. overall. Not sounding too ex dangerous, ex except when they get to be too many. Yeah, because it, it doesn't seem to be stopping. Like, cloning. The worst case scenario with this syndrome could be the complete inability to have satellites functional yeah and satellites being pretty damn important to our daily lives that's true but also i read that a bit faster than i thought i would so i we can probably get Hatchet to read one more, too, if they want to. I am reading one more. I just don't know where to put this. Um, yeah. Because like, I, I feel like World Changing would be the most appropriate one. Because, yeah. like, if it actually spiraled into a Kessler Syndrome event that was too severe, it would dramatically change how the world operates. Mm -hmm. Spood tier gives food the space trash. 
Fury, ask Spood if they want the space trash. Spood is downstairs, so I Shit. feel like they cannot go into the Spood gear. Okay. Uh, then yeah, I'd say world changing. <laughs> so I'm sure if Spood was upstairs, they would want the space trash, but they are not upstairs. Yeah. So they don't get the space trash. Yeah. They should have thought of that before they went downstairs. They probably went downstairs to eat. They should have thought about it's that before time. they got hungry. Well, well, it's dinner time. I'm hungry. I just like SEP. And uh, I don't remember the last time that Bright has done an SCP tier. Yeah, a really long time. Tier. Anyways, right. the next SCP which Hatchet will be reading is SCP-2277, the number right after mine. It is Andronica Atima Maxima. Okay, I've got it open. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This doesn't look to be too long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Description. SCP-2277 is an unknown user or autonomous 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 sorry an, an unknown user or autonomous program of unknown origin which regularly engages in spamming or harassing phone calls to individuals using pre-recorded voices and unusual redacted ventrilo mumble Redacted, Redacted, and Skype. SCP-2277 records or records these harassing calls and uploads audio with accompanying video to various sites such as YouTube, Vimeo, and Daily Motion under the guise of popular ventrilo harassments or soundboard prank calls. These videos... 77-A. The views often feature victims being enraged at the persistent verbal abuse and spam and involves the interspersing of humorous images and video clips to dis to dis de 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 designate certain speakers. The uploader is frequently represented as an 8-bit animated image of Carl Sagan. As he appeared in 1980 series Cosmos, any further relation to Dr. Sagan and or Cosmos is unknown or else non-existent. 2277A's anomalous effects are apparently triggered Excuse me. Apparently triggered by the bursts of noise interspersed in its harassments or in its harassment videos. Attempts to decode the noise have variably revealed them to be fragments of apparently mundane conversation between unknown persons or otherwise background noise from an unidentified public area with individuals speaking a variety of languages. Individuals exposed to 2277-A gradually develop a persistent delusion involving a fictitious individual, faction, or nation going variably by the names Andronica, Andronique, or Andronica in different spellings. The most common spelling used for Andronica and will be used in this document for brevity. Okay. Depending on the individual lack of university knowledge of Andronica, Andronica will lead to increased scrutiny of recent historical record and the prep and the per perpetration of certain conspiracy theories involving the destruction of Andronica 
and the suppression of any and all information relating to it slash them. Present details on Andronica, Andronica include <laughs> a strong matriarchal society and or strong emphasis on a female leadership, heavy emphasis on ancient Greek slash Roman history and philosophy, primarily military history, with a direct emphasis and references frequently made to the writings and persons of the oh gods i'm gonna butcher some of these thukydides thykydides uh gaius julius caesar polybius polybius xenophon redacted and rarely theodore arliat dodge doge dodge i okay a strong emphasis. Could that first one have been Thuleides or something? Uh, it's uh, T H U C Y D I D E S. Can you spell that again? Sorry. T H U C Y D I D E S. Who's it? Sid Wait. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to like remember the letters and like they're like just. Could you like just copy it and then like paste it? Okay, I think I think it might be pronounced uh, Thucydides. Oh yeah, no, that that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, Thucydides. Okay. A strong emphasis on sex among military units as a means of cohesion and morale. Example citing the sacred band of Thebes. Note, Andronican military forces are depicted as largely female, implying a strong emphasis on homosexual relations, although reference to integrated male units have been found. This, yeah, that sounds pretty Greek. Yeah, this is Yuri. Oh my gods, yeah, this is just SCP Yuri. It's it's like inverse Greek history where instead of uh like heavily patriarchal, it's matriarchal. Mm -hmm. A belief in the need of oh oh this just got bad. What it, a belief in a need for a system of eugenics, variably involving a system of forced sterilization, or in certain innocent instances, the big G word, based along an unknown stratification uniformly known as uh, hierogenito-social, or GS for short. The basis of this system of classification is never elaborated upon yeah so this just went from cool uh scp yuri to what the fuck uh a belief that the end of the world is imminent if these eugenics programs are not instituted a belief that a secretive pair a secretive paragovernmental society is intentionally sabotaging attempts at transnational reclamation or the f formation of a singular global authority known variously as the Technics, Eaters, Kenati, Kenatis, or Pleistionarchs. Note, see addendum. <laughs> For Hatchet's SCP. So far, Hatchet's SCP one is three is three out of three on dark SCPs. So Nazis, but girl boss, girl boss Nazis is not something I wanted to see today. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay. We've seen many forms of Nazis so far on this list. It's not what I was expecting, but. <laughs> Oh, okay. Interestingly, Class you couldn't call. Interestingly, you couldn't call them feminazis, because. Oh my god! 
<laughs> they, they are not feminists at all. Ow. Ow. Okay. Did you hurt yourself last just... night? Oh. You alright? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. It's three classes of SCP 2277. A identification have been established among affected individuals. That's right. This, this is like, this is all stemming from fucking people watching videos about harassing people on YouTube. That that's the source of this anomalous shit. Oh. You you yeah. watch these harassment videos and then you become obsessed with the the fucking matriarchal Greek Nazism. So you okay. basically become a harasser when you watch about harassers. Yeah. I just remembered should probably dial it back on the N-word because well that sounds way worse. The 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 German the German party word. <laughs> Different N word. Different N word. I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not referring to that N word. <laughs> okay. Just call it uh, the the happy German party. Of course we have a no. clip. We have a clip. No, sure? no, we do not have a clip. Bookworm, do not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, call it. Yep. Yeah. Quote the happy German pretty one. If any other uh, term, everyone will know what it means. I mean, there are so many things you can call them that are already nicknames for them. Okay. I, I won't, won't clip, clip it, says Buck. Thank you. Book also I, says I was also. I would have deleted it anyways. Hatchet. <laughs> Book says also. Does it only affect women? Probably not. So the men wish themselves to be subjugated. <laughs> oh no. Leave that to the true haters of Bright's channel. <laughs> okay. Anyway, three classes of SCP twenty two seventy seven A identification have been established among affected individuals. A small number, redacted percent of individuals affected by... Ooh. Ooh. I will mention that the redacted percent looks to be a two-digit number. So it's at least 10% of individuals affected by 2271A, regardless of which classification they are bound to begin to display symptoms of roughly analogous to those described as afflicting the person Andronica described in Series A of SCP-2277-A classifications. Yeah, Hatch, if you click the classifications, it'll show you that oh, the missed. ABC oh, okay. thing. Yeah. Rip. Okay. I mean, I didn't read that. <laughs> okay. A, in which Andronica is referred to as a tall Caucasian woman with red hair and bright eyes, variously described as green, gray, or gold, often depicted with large breasts and wide hips. In these instances, Andronica is described as a former slave who escapes captivity using sex and her wit to deceive and trick oppressive male figures while steadily gathering a cult-like following of individuals devoted to her. She is described as being highly sexual, often engaging her followers in sex, as well as being afflicted by a number of psychological ailments, descriptions of which match uh, Tour oh, Tourette's Syndrome, Frigoli Delusion, and Schizoaffective Disorder, or possibly hypomania this sounds like something an incel would dream up when describing things yeah yeah okay um in the a version of events andronica is described as uniting varying peoples in the balkan region of europe between 1890 and 1895 before somehow managing to usurp large portions of the Ottoman Empire 
in the Levant and Armenia and establishing a queendom based upon the principles listed above. Her story ends with a secretive coalition of European powers who apparently have her killed and begin to systemically hunt and kill her followers before dismembering the states into tributaries and or smaller states based upon national slash religious lines. Believers of this version of SCP-2277 often attribute the Middle Eastern front of World War I and the Armenian big G word by the Ottoman Turks to be cover so- stories to hide the anti and Andronican coalition. So we're getting into a uh, big G word uh, denial from the people afflicted by this anomaly. That's always a good time, sarcastically. You okay? Yeah. Water. I should probably drink. Yeah. Why do I? Why do I keep getting the heavy shit? I don't know, Bright. Why? Why do they keep getting the heavy shit instead of you? I can control it. I just pick a number, and it's <laughs> yeah. I just throw it at this way. You think I always know where the heavy shit goes to? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Okay. B in which Andronica is referred to as a large centralized nation centered in Bosnia circa the mid-1800s. In this version of events, the nation-state of Andronica emerges as a confederation of wealthy nobles and merchants seeking independence from a fictitious entity known as the Kingdom and Duchies of Germania Kamata. Kamata. Kamada, Kamada. Encompassing portions of Austria, Hungary, Hungary, hung, Hungary, hung, hung, I need to stop. <laughs> Austro Hungary, uh, Germany, and Bulgaria. Endronica is described as engaging in a lengthy campaign of crushing military victories, uniting Germany and Italy before becoming overextended and collapsing due to destabilization or destabilizing de- destabilizing efforts of foreign agents variably described as english american russian and wendish from wendy's wend is a medieval era term referring to slavic peoples living in germanic areas okay so it's not wendy's The adjective kamada comes from the Latin word kamadus, which means long-haired, hairy. So it's the hairy Germans. <laughs> okay. Believers of this version of SCP-2277 often attribute the unification and formations of the modern states of Italy and Germany to be the result of Andronique, Andronican conquests. It is also said that the rise of nationalistic violence during this time is associated with aforementioned foreign agents' attempts at destabilizing destabilizing Andronica. B, in which Andronica, Andronica, and fuck. I've been reading too much. In which Andronica is referred to as a polyglot a, a polyglot? I have never seen that word in my life. Polyglot? Yeah, polyglot. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up. Yeah. Referred to as a polyglot of Eastern European bourgeoisie. Oh, and... uh, polyglot is knowing or using several languages. Okay. It's refer. Okay, so Andronica is referred to... Is there to... another, uh, is there another, like, translation, oh, uh, another definition okay. of that? Okay, so in which Andronica is referred to a poly... referred to a polyglot, polyglot of Eastern European bourgeoisie and guilds centered largely in Northern Greece, Austria, and Romania, 
who are brought together by an unknown group of women. None of the women are referred to as Andronica, nor described in any further detail. At some point between 1899 and 1920, the Andronica faction emerges as a multinational war band described in text as a modern-day Varangian guard? Varangian? Varangian? How is it spelled? And Glotta language. Uh, oh god. Uh, V-A-R-A-N-G-I-A-N. Varangian. Oh. Okay. Modern day Varangian Guard with a long term goal of manipulating regional politics to better accommodate the rise of the Andro Andronican state. Oh, it's a Byzantine military unit. Okay. Any potential corollary with the actual history disappears around 1934 as the Andronicans emerge in this telling as a significant geopolitical force. 1937, they become engaged in war with Nazi Germany, in which the Andronicans appear to be victorious. Descriptions of female Andronicans at this point begin to describe the women as having superhuman abilities, Inclu including being freeze and fireproof, bullet resistant, and favoring melee combat with anachronist with, with, with anachronistic large shields and short spears made of an unknown metal described as gleaming red gold. An occupation of Germany begins in which the Andronicans fail to integrate the German people leading to a large scale revolt in which their world which other world powers are brought in to stop and and okay. Andronican big G. Okay, one question. Is this just a fucking um Amazonian fan fiction thing? I'm starting to have that suspicion. A bunch of Amazons came in and fucked up the Nazis. The, I think I like the C variant the best thus far. Okay, so it's, it's LMG. It's your period in Wakanda. I don't know much of anything about Wakanda. Literally, all I know is it has to do with Marvel. <laughs> Same. Amazonian fanfic. Well, so that, that was like referring to oh, like yeah. um. The Tiri became Black Panther. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot that all of these still include eugenicists. So, the... yeah. Okay. C affected individuals tend to be fewer in number and less likely to insist upon the veracity of the story. Oh, yeah, the, the U.S. was so eugenicists and we well yeah helped defeat the nazis too so yeah veracity of the story possibly due to the higher level of deviancy or yeah deviancy from historical records okay so now we're back to what i had tried to say a small number uh redacted percent of individuals affected by scp for 2277A, regardless of which classification they are bound to, begin to display symptoms uh, roughly analogous to those described as afflicting the, afflicting the person Andronica described in Series A. So they start uh, displaying symptoms of Tourette syndrome, Frigoli delusion, uh, schizoactive disorder, or possibly hyper. Hypomania. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know why they put Tourette's on there. Mm. Are they trying? I, think it's, I mean, I, th I think it's like a list of disorders that they appear to exhibit. Okay. Not that they're like all the same disorders. 
Well, like I was just wondering about what the person who wrote it um, was trying to do. Oh, okay. By mm -hmm. choosing those specific disorders. Mm -hmm. Okay. Efforts to stop the effects of SCP-2277-A have been largely unsuccessful as the use of amnestics has had an only temporary effect in suppressing memory of Andronica. Repeated administration of anesthetics has found to be necessary to remove memory of uh, 2277-A for a period of blank to 25 years. However, due to risk of autoimmune and or neurological disorder as a result, frequent use of anesthetics have been banned and new containment procedures initiated to minimize the potential impact of pre-existing affected individuals. For Frigoli delusion, the Frigoli delusion is a rare disorder in which a person holds a delusional belief that the different people, that different people are in fact a single person who changes appearance or is in disguise. I think I've heard of that, yeah. Frigoli syndrome, yeah. Okay. Addendum. As foundation containment procedures were implemented, certain individuals affected by... Okay, yeah, this is where I was at. SCP-2277 began to become aware of efforts made by foundation front companies, foundation front companies to mitigate SCP-2277 spread. A DDoS distributed denial of service was launched upon blank misinformation websites maintained by foundation fronts. A fresh source of 2277-A was found being distributed as a pornographic video. Audio is consistent with prior instances of 2277-A. Interviews with affected individuals of 2277 have indicated an apparent awareness of 2277, a, awareness by 2277 of Foundation efforts to contain it. Stories involving Andronica have been updated to incriminate an ERSATS Foundation found as ERSATS Foundation, known as the Society for the Consolidation of Power as being involved in each iteration of Andronica's downfall. Information posted by affected individuals on forums and websites have increasingly contained details regarding this society and its activities, as well as its secretive Council of 13 engaging in, in secretive activity to infiltrate world governments for the express purpose of suppressing knowledge of Andronica and perpetuating a supposed GS-based system. Many of the details regarding the society's hierarchical structure have been found to be similar to that used by the SCP Foundation. Yeah, we're at full-blown conspiracy territory. As of uh, Redacted Redacted 2014, no sensitive information has been leaked Although the websites in question have been taken down and the affected individuals involved <sighs> have been detained by Foundation personnel until such times as a makeshift solution can be found to mitigate potential risk of exposure of Foundation personnel or assets working on SCP-2277. Despite the absence of any information relating to the Foundation's containment, of anomalous items flash redacted SCP-2277 has been upgraded to Keter and all measures should be taken to prevent further leak of information relating to the fictitious society of the consolidation of power. Okay. How the fuck do we classify that? I don't know. Okay, so it basically just fuels conspiracy theories, but yeah. said conspiracy theories might come to the point of 
exposing foundation secrets. Which is not good, because if it blows Cognito Hazard secrets, that could be really bad. No, but I also doubt that, that would it would come to that point. Yeah. Or Society of the Consolidation of Power spells out SCP. Yeah. Which is why it's so weird. Yeah. Uh, then I guess, I guess the O5 Council, if it does come to the point where it could release Kanito Hazards, they do the measures they do to protect the 001s. For those who don't know, it, they put a Cognito Hazard on there that only certain people can go through it. Other people get their memories wiped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the thing. I feel like the majority yeah. of society will basically just ignore these people. Yeah. So I don't know how much genuine harm they could cause. But, like, if we're talking just in terms of their effects, it would be, like, certain groups. I, I, I'm kind of going with that, too. I'm leaning towards that. Yeah, because, like, it's, it's not causing actual tangible harm outside of making people conspiracy theorists. Also, Pokemon says also Adronica could potentially lead to wars and revolts if it gets big enough. I mean, I suppose it could, but mm, I kind of doubt it getting to that point. Especially since we do have the fallback of multiple anesthetizings that just causes health issues. Yeah, and honestly, if uh... If amnestics aren't working to make it stop, they'll probably just call the GOC to handle it. Nah. <laughs> you know they will. <laughs> Although, on a personal level, uh, it is particularly concerning that one of those instances of 2277-A was hidden in a porn video. Oh, God! I feel like that means no one is safe. Yeah from getting this but simultaneously it's not like it's going to like instantly affect entire continents yeah or it's cities. probably like a small percentage yeah true i guess i just read into the motive that andronica wants them to build andronica mm. I'm, I'd say certain group. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking that too. Everyone else in agreement? Yeah. Our derm is muted. I'll go certain group. Yeah. How did you be in all the, the fucked up anomalies? Yeah, I I got a bunch of fucked up ones. Since I went, went okay. first... When I went first this stream, how you go first next stream? I mean, Hatch, get, Hatch gets the, all of the fuck up in my ways again next stream. I swear to fuck. <laughs> Although, let's just be frank, I'm kind of glad that I'm the one getting the fucked up anomalies, because at the very least, we know for a fact that I'm better at handling fucked up topics than Bright when reading them. Yep. Oh my god. Yep. Definitely. Because, you know, we have, we, ha we have prior precedent, Bright. We love you. We know you don't mean to. But you, you're bad at this. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, I at least stopped myself from saying a bit the R yeah, word. Yeah, at least you stopped yourself from saying a slur this time. Congratulations, <laughs> we're gonna put like five dollars in the good bright jar. <laughs> that five dollars will be summarily revoked the next time you make an off switch joke. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, uh, back to the ending stream scene. Do I want to go live and play some Stardew, or just call it quits for the night?
you're still streaming in Discord, by the way. Oh, shit. I mean, I was just gonna see if there's anyone I want to raid. This is it's not like it's showing anything important. <laughs> hey, Chu. Hi, Chu. Did you get forward yet? Oh my god. <laughs> and no, uh, there's no one to raid. So, book on last words. Mouse yes. We should be see. Oh, you should be see. Oh, your info. Honestly, if I showed you something sensitive, I doubt any of you would say anything. Like, or Her take pictures or anything. I, I mean, Her you probably. S Oh my god. Her dead name, eh? No, no, no. Wait, what's going on? I was saying if I actually showed a, a bit of sense of info, you probably, you guys would probably not see anything at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, make sure I don't get doxxed. Yeah, we don't want you doxxed. And then I jokingly said, her dead name, eh? <laughs> and stopped there. Yeah. I do um, know her dead name, but I'm never gonna say it. Same. Yeah, same. I think I've said it once, but meh. Yeah. I also the, know the name of a certain jackass, which you are not friends with anymore, but... Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, those two. Yeah, one was just stupider than the other, but they were both stupid. Anyways, we're right on the last words of Bukham. Yeah, tomorrow I should be able to stream till 3. Are oh, you just gonna stream more of this? Yeah. And then Monday we we'll Minecraft. I stream till 3. Wait, three when? No, I'm just saying I'll stream from uh, 9 to 3 a.m. I'm going to take a nap after I get back from work, so I'll be ready for it. Don't worry, I'll sleep. Oh, okay. I'll sleep. <laughs> Fire Red Ember. Oh, there is the last race. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow. Bright for more ranking SCP atrocities. Give her money if you can to help support her and protect her from overwork from her job. It's ironic in a way, promoting SCPs while keeping Bright safe. It's like advocating <laughs> for wildfires, but asking for fire extinguishers on standby. <laughs> Let's keep the energy chaotic, support them so they don't get restrained by mundane jobs. But remember, Every donation is a tiny rebellion against normalcy. Don't just smash that subscribe button. Obliterate it. Like you're taking down a particularly malevolent SCP. Oh no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Chill. Chill. <laughs> Anyways. What? She says, why is Joke's, Joker's voice kind of that, that, that? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. But Plum said excellent, and then Chu just made the Chu Wu voice, not voice, face. Hey. That's, hey. A, that's a bong for the Chu. Hey, uh, hey, gay daddy, uh, what's your last words? Did you just call me what? gay daddy? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh my god. Am I wrong? Wait, does Bill Burr have a have a role in uh Andor? Wait, what? That came uh, out of nowhere. I don't think so. Or is this from a different series? I know this is a Star Wars clip I'm looking at. Um it's from uh It's from what is it called? The uh Mandalorian. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyways, I'll redo that. Uh, all right. Cheery, the gay daddy. Last words go. Please don't call me gay daddy again. <laughs> Sounds weird. <laughs> I love you, but don't. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there are last words go. Um. Follow, subscribe. Right as a cat bird. Ah, oh, damn it. Anyways, that's what's going <laughs> Alright, anyways, And remember, everybody. If the Earth is made out of triangular pieces of blueberry bubblegum, then the Earth is made out of triangular pieces of blueberry bubblegum. Oh. <laughs> Am I supposed to say something else? <laughs> I don't know. Do you want me to say something else? Do you think I should add something to to <laughs> the Earth is made out of triangular pieces of blueberry bubblegum? No, it's fine. Would you prefer I say something else, Bright? <laughs> Pizza tastes good on just about anything. Fine then, I'll add on that Bright is made out of blueberry birds. Happy now? Oh my god. What? Anyways. Anyways, thanks, you know. I hope Can you enjoyed. The earth? Oh my god. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you guys next time for your next mission. And... For the earth. Uh. The asshole of war's penises. <laughs>